Hello? Are we there? How you guys doing? Thanks for coming. I think we're live. Be free. Make Hold mistakes. On. Try Hold things. On. Mute that. Okay. All right, what's up, guys? How's everyone doing? I hope you guys got like a margarita or something. You know, it's like a little late at night. I couldn't get a video done. I have to do, uh, I, I got to make a living, right? So I'm getting some sponsors and, um, and they require approval. And I usually work up until the moment the video goes live. So um, in order to get that video approved for Thursday, I figured I'd just do a live stream in lieu of a video. Um, I have a, a couple of big videos I have to do, so they're kind of like taking up a lot of planning and uh, you know, things are a little bit crazy right now. Uh, thanks for sort of being patient. I've slowed down with comments, answering comments. Um, it's just been a little bit hard, so uh, I thought I'd just do a live stream. It's like, you know, a little before bedtime, I'm in my PJs, I just showered, and um, I figured I'd just sort of answer your questions. So the way it's going to work is we got some moderators in the chat, um, Cooking with CJ and Monica Rodriguez. Uh, these are my homies. They're gonna run the chat, and Monica's gonna ask questions so if you want to get her attention tag monica rodriguez and uh, she's going to organize questions pass them along to me and i'll do my best to answer as many as i can um i don't know we'll see how long i can go um for those of you guys in europe i'm sorry it's so late um i had you know i woke up with a gash in my tire and i couldn't spend the day dealing with it so i had to keep filling air in it like three times throughout the day and then this afternoon i drove it and uh got it to get worked on and pick it up in the morning so anyway i'm done blabbering cheers to all you guys that made it um thank you for all the support uh you guys have been really amazing um so let's just figure out the questions uh, let me see over here. Monica's got some questions. Um, Monica, make sure that you put the name of the person who asked the question so I can acknowledge them. Uh, first question, who are your biggest food influencers? Um, I'm assuming you mean like influences. Um, in that case, I'd have to say, obviously, Anthony Bourdain. Uh, shout out to Pete and Gary's Eggs Company. They sent me this thing, and this is probably the coolest gift I've ever gotten, especially from a company. So just so you guys know, Pete and Gary's Eggs are like, they're cool. They know what's up, and they got good eggs. So um, this guy, Francis Malman, he's, he was in the first season of Chef's Table. He cooks with fire. And these big sort of elaborate outdoor scenes. Uh, I'm really influenced by him. I'm pretty much influenced by anyone who's ever been on a chef's table uh, episode. Um, food influences. There's so many. I mean, I just like, I, I enjoy just, uh, just when I'm bored, I sort of just like find some video online. Hopefully Netflix has like a, this new thing that they had, uh, Taco Chronicles, um, that's been such a big inspiration. Every episode is sort of like a, an episode on tacos and it's shot sort of in the same style as Chef's Table. So that's, that's the kind of stuff that I'm really inspired by. It's really hard for me to pick out. There's like so many chefs and, and food people that I love. Um, it's, yeah, it's hard. I mean, uh, anyway, I'll move on to another one. First job that encouraged you to want to cook? Um, I actually, in high school, my first job was actually a dishwasher at like a, a 19th hole kind of restaurant on a golf course. And I, lo I love golf, so it was sort of a cool thing to do. Um, it was sort of a, uh, you would think a dishwasher job is sort of like a, a rough job, but I somehow loved it. I liked the, um, I liked working in that sort of environment. 
I didn't have too much responsibility to like screw anything up, but every now and then uh, I would be asked to help with the chef and like, you know, make chicken, chicken, fry up some chicken fingers, um, make a salad, uh, help with prep. And that was sort of my first exposure to it. And, um, you know, it was just a summer job. I didn't really care that much, but I did enjoy it. You know, people would party after the shift and have drinks and stuff like that. So I sort of, I like that idea of like work hard, play hard. Uh, so that's probably my first, like, uh, that probably gave me my first taste of what I do now. What's something you never made but would love to make and make perfect? Baking. I want to get better at baking. I don't know much about baking. Uh, if you guys saw my uh, my churro video for 368, uh, I obviously don't know like what the churro dough is supposed to look like, so I screwed that up. Um, so just baking in general. Um, hat. Is... What is one thing you think home cooks should do immediately to up their cooking game? Knife skills. Definitely knife skills. Um, if you're good at, with a knife, then like the 30 minutes of prep you would normally do of like chopping everything up takes you five minutes and, um, and you get cooking quicker. And then it's like a, a barrier to entry that you're removing. You know, you're just, you're faster at prepping everything. You can get organized quicker. Um, it'll change your game. Also having a pantry, like really, really think about a pantry, like rices, grains, pastas, vinegars, oils, um, things you can just quickly make a starch that you could just go out and buy a vegetable and a protein. And then you have a dinner. Um, so like, you know, quinoa is barley, farro, rice, white rice, brown rice, just get a variety of these things and you can sort of mix it up that way. Um, favorite pizza in New York is Ruby Rosa vodka pie for sure with some pepperoni on it maybe. And I'm just like, I like it plain. I think it's really interesting, um, to switch up the sauce to a vodka sauce, which is obviously delicious. Um, sorry, we, I don't have any names coming, so I, I can't acknowledge anything. Monica, what are you doing over here? I don't pay you the big bucks to leave out names. Uh, what dish reminds you of your childhood the most? Uh, it's got to be... Um, shoot. It's got to be pasta and meatballs. Um, I remember going to my grandma's house, and uh, pretty much like the only thing I remember her ever making for us was pot roast, and pasta and meatballs and like sausage and stuff like that. My mom's grandma didn't really, she was, um, my grandpa here, my mom's grandpa was German, so my mom's mom didn't make so much Italian. Like I don't remember her make, killing Italian dishes. My dad's mom was more of an Italian cook. And, uh, you know, she, she was sort of gave me the only sort of feeling of like a, you know, Sunday, family meatball dinner uh, whenever I went up to visit them. So that was definitely my first really favorite meal, I think. Um, least favorite thing to eat or make. I hate olives and coconut, um, but like I like olive oil and coconut water. So who, who knows, but I can taste coconut from a mile away. I just, I, I cannot stand it. I can't believe people actually eat it. I put that stuff when I'm like on a beach and it like, I can smell it. So it's like, whenever I taste it, it smells like, you know, suntan lotion, essentially. Oh, it's gross. Uh, not so big into like lots of offal and like, uh, you know, um, sweet bread, stuff like that. I, not my favorite. Um, okay. Jeez. I hear we got a lot of questions coming in. I've got like uh, batches coming in like crazy. So bear with me. How are you able to take a step and follow your dream? Uh, well, I sort of had no choice. Um, I had spent 10 years sort of like meandering and figuring out things and trying different things. Um, 
And then before the show happened, sort of, I guess the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, I was running a production company and I just gotten like a big, a big deal with like a run Zoni and like no yolks noodles and like a, that the family of regional pasta brands that is under that. And, um, and that was like a ton of money. I was going to really be able to live comfortably. I was also engaged at the time, um, six months away from getting married and I, the marriage fell apart, the wedding engagement fell, fell apart and the, my production, that client hired a new director of marketing and like halted all operations, pretty much halting my life to an incredible stop. And, uh, and so I needed, I had like a, I was like basically back against the wall. What's something I've always wanted to do, never did, didn't care about what anybody thought or what would happen. I sort of just knew I had it in me and uh, I bet on myself. And, you know, I had 10 years of skills, like the things you see me do, it's not because I'm like a magician, like I've been doing this for years and I've been practicing and somehow it all just came together in this sort of, I don't know, it felt like just channeling, right? It was, I didn't think much. It was just like channeling something that was in me and letting it out and not being afraid to sort of have it not be liked or have people in my life judge me for what I was doing. It did seem crazy to people in my life when I was like, hey, in light of what just happened, uh, I'm going to go start like the best cooking show that there ever was in my opinion or try to. Most people in my life are sort of looking at me like, well, what the hell are you doing? Like, are you about to just ruin your life? So I was uh, sort of in the a hole and this was my big bet to get myself out of it. And 16, 17 months later, it seems to be paying off pretty well. So I'm grateful for all of you. You've really helped me pull me out of a ditch that, you know, at the time really didn't think I was going to get out of. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, very grateful to all of you. Uh, it's why I care so much. It's why, uh, I get upset when I can't answer every comment. Um, it's part of my service. Like I, tr I really I'm trying to figure out how, as I grow to still stay in touch with you guys. Um, for now, I'm just saying, if you really need to reach me, reach me on a um, direct message on Instagram at the food freak with two K's. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm very grateful for all of you. So that's that story. Get that out of the way. Now you know that about me. It's like a, you know, I'm like an open book now. It's crazy. What else? What's your favorite food movie scene? I just rewatched Chef because of that sh Netflix show that came on. And um, I just love that movie. The first half of that movie um, basically the shot scenes where he was cooking, that's some of the best food cinema for sure. Uh, but there's so many great ones. Favorite sandwich in an out burger has to be, I know I, it's pr only because I can't get it. I can't really, I can make it close, but I cannot make what they make. I don't have the ingredients. And, um, and since it's like a forbidden fruit, it has to be my favorite thing. Um, Tell us more about your culinary background. Uh, when I graduated college, I worked in advertising. I hated it. It sucked. And uh, at the same time, I learned about food, how food was produced in this company, mainly, you know, four evil, bad, dirty companies. I started to figure out what was going on. Uh, that debate is for another time, but basically that got me cooking. Uh, when I was miserable in my job in advertising, I wanted to plan a food truck, get my way out of there. And so I thought if I was planning the food truck, I might as well document my cooking. And uh, so I started this food blog, The Food Freak, to learn how to figure out how to cook. And I documented it. And it was very much at the time not people didn't use photos and recipes and cookbooks. So I took, I'm dyslexic if you can't tell by all of the misspellings in the videos. Um, so I took the idea of like lots of pictures. I wanted to show people the visual of the recipe and I did that for a year. Then I started the food truck with my brother and another guy who were both chefs. So just being next to them rubbed off on me. Um, we were put in some pretty rough situations and I was basically thrown into the fire and I survived. I came out the other side, like capable of like 
having culinary chops. And then over the next few years, I had a production company specializing in food and I cooked for myself and just developed over time. And before you know it, you're cooking for 10 years and you're pretty decent at it. And if you keep learning and studying new things, um, like this show has really elevated my cooking. Like I wasn't even this good at cooking 16 months ago. It's because I feel pressure to get better. And like when I make a pasta recipe, I want to really nail the pasta recipe. So I'm going to do research and study and figure out all of the ways that there are to make it. And if there's a way that's traditional that I can make easier for a home cook, then like I'm, I'm really thinking in that world. So um, it's just constant evolution. Like I'll get better as I go along. And I hope as you see me get better, you're like, oh, I can get better too. And like, I don't ever want to be you, you guys to think I'm like above any of you guys. Like I'm in a different stage maybe than you are. If you're, some of you who watch me are probably above me. Like I know other creators who have YouTube channels that like I'm not as good at technically and I go to them uh, friends that, and I, I ask them stuff, you know what I mean? So I'm always learning. This show isn't like I am uh, Gordon Ramsay and I'm teaching you as an expert on everything. Like I'm doing my diligence, I'm studying, I'm getting better. And that's what cooking is. I mean, nobody knows it all. And um, that's what I think is great about it. We're all in the same boat. We're just like kind of in different levels and we can inspire each other and push each other to get better. And at the end of the day, the goal is to just enjoy life more. Uh, like the whole reason I do this is because I enjoy life through food. People who I've entertained for enjoy the food I prepare because I feel like I pair it with love and care and I want them to thoroughly enjoy it. And by doing that, I get pleasure out of it. I enjoy my time when I entertain. And it's just something that I, I feel like, um, you know, when you can cook your family a meal, your friends, it's something every human who may not do that now might experience that down the road and be like, holy crap, like, this is the best thing ever. How did I not do this before? Um, so, yeah, that's that. Man, I, I'm just getting drowned in comments. I'm getting killed over here. Bobby Buns, how tall are you? 5'8". Giselle Carrillo, did you go to culinary school? No. Uh, Lindsay asked, do you bake? Will you ever see on the channel? I, I do bake. I'm not great at it. When I bake, I'll have no confidence and you'll see it. And it'll be sort of like learning and um, outside of recipes that may be in, be in my family that I've done. Um, what's your favorite cooking channel on YouTube? Mm. Alex, French guy cooking has one of the best for sure. Um, I really like the Bon Appetit people. Uh, who else? There's so many. I mean, I, I'm watching Italia Squisita. Um, they're like an Italian YouTube channel and uh, I do a, a lot of it is just in Italian. Uh, it's not in English. Some of them have subtitles. I watch that a lot. I really, um, I just like scrolling YouTube, uh, all of the cooking stuff. Um, I watch a lot of grandmas. Uh, when I did my Mexican street corn, I watched like little camera footage from Mexican street corn vendors. Watched how they actually like prepared it um, once the corn was cooked. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's it. Uh, what cuisine would you like to explore and try cooking? Um, I try and explore all the ones that I like. I'd like to get better at Asian. I don't know. I mean, a, the, the style of Asian with like the wok cooking becomes difficult at home. So um, that is something I'd like to get better at. Um, I think that's it. Besides... Uh, Favorite sauces besides Verde? Probably just like a rich wine reduction sauce on a steak for like a holiday, something simple like that. There is this sauce at a restaurant called Mark Forgione in New York City. It's called Sauce Proposal. It's like a soy, lime, butter emulsion that goes on a halibut, and it is like the most ridiculous sauce ever. I've tried to make it, I've come close. I'll probably work on it and I'll try and share it and figure it out on the channel at some point. Um, if you had a chance to cook with Tony Bourdain, what would you cook? Um, 
I don't know. I would, if I was cooking for him, I would want to cook pasta and see what he thought. Um, Angel Nguyen, 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 um, as a 19 year old, do you think YouTube is one of the best ways to have a chance in the culinary industry without going to culinary school to see if you have a chance at it? I don't know because I sort of uh, cut my teeth in a hellish situation of running a food truck in a brutal situation, in a brutal city. Uh, so at the end of it, I realized I didn't want to be in culinary school or like be in a restaurant. Um, but culinary school is expensive and it's, you still have to get a job afterwards and do all of that. I don't know. Uh, I think everybody has a different path. My path was sort of, I, I learned best on my own. Uh, I learned with my eyes. So like watching people do things and having the internet available and being able to just steal things with my eyes. Uh, is a better way for me to learn. You sort of have to just know uh, if you want really that top knowledge, um, I would go to culinary school. I mean, my brother went there, made him a great cook. It's like sort of foolproof. Uh, what is your favorite meal to eat? Not just to cook. Barbecue. I love eating barbecue. And I love cooking it, but I can't really eat a lot of it after I spent 12 hours cooking it. So... Somebody's making it for me, I can chow down. Will you ever make lasagna by Tech Daily? Yes, I will. J.M. Hums asks, pita bread. I can't get it to puff. What am I doing wrong? I don't know, I've never made pita bread. I, the store seems to have them better than I feel like I can make them, or I just haven't made them yet. I haven't figured that out, but we'll do it on the show eventually, and, um, and hopefully we can solve that for you. Uh, Kicking milk. What did you eat today? What did I eat today? Oh, so Friday's video, uh, Thursday's video, spaghetti alle vongolo, spaghetti and clams. I had that for lunch, and uh, I was panicking at the end of the day. I was rushing, so I just ordered a Shake Shack burger and fries. Uh, have you ever been to Italy before? Yes, I lived there for three months in college in Florence on Via de Neri. So if anyone from here is on Florence, I used to live across from this place called Yami Yami. It was a kebab shop. It was the best place ever. They were the only people in the city who tried to help me learn to speak Italian, and they closed. And uh, if you ever go to Italy, visit this street, Via Dineri, um, N-E-R-I. And it was one of my favorite streets. It was such a, it was a, some, a, a an apartment, I guess, the school had um, for us exchange students, and it was like, they couldn't have put us in a cooler, better spot. And it was so awesome. Um, what's the most intimidating dish you've made so far? The one you practice the most? Um, whew, shoot, I don't know. I'm going to skip that because I can't think of an answer fast enough. Um, what's your absolute favorite dessert of all time? Oh. God, I don't know. I'm not a huge dessert person. Uh, I like cake. Um, there are just like, there, there's these obscure, weird desserts in New York City when you go out to dinner where it's like, uh, it doesn't look or sound amazing, but like it just like blows your mind. Like, I, like just, I like things with texture. So lots of texture. Um, so like somebody makes like a s'more dish but recreates it. I love stuff like that. Um, Here's one thing I wonder. Nice to learn. Um, some of some of these are like written a little weird, so I, I can't read them and understand them quick enough. So I'm just gonna skip. Matthew asks, "How are you?" I'm okay. Apparently, this is like this Capricorn eclipse, some astrology thing, which I'm using to justify a weird week I'm having. But all good. Thank you. Um, Starvin S T R V N asks. Has YouTube transitioned to be your full-time income? It was my full-time income since I started a channel, even when I was making no income from it. But I was always working with a company or doing something that was bringing income in. So whether it was mo the channel is monetized, like you're going to see the next video sponsored, like that hasn't always been the case. It's starting to become more of the case now. But before I was just like using my photography skills, my videography skills, my marketing skills, all that stuff to just make sure I was bringing in money 
somehow through my production company, whether it was small or big or whatever, that was keeping me afloat uh, up until now. Um, how have you managed to live in New York on your own before better financial opportunities? I lived at home. I after my bad breakup and that thing happened, I was like, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna if I, if I can if I think I'm gonna start this channel and I can do it better. I want to have no, I want to have no stressors, right? So even if I could have moved into the city, um, I wouldn't have had, found a better kitchen. That would have like made, I wouldn't have had a good kitchen. I couldn't have barbecued outside, which is how I make money. Um, and then I would have just paid money to live in a kitchen, live in a city, an apartment in the city, and reverse commute back and forth. And I'm just throwing money away when I need to be pouring it into the show. So. I mean, I'm still living out of my parents' house right now. I don't know how, I don't know where I'm going to bring the show. And so that's stressing me out. So instead of actually doing something about it, I don't do anything about it. I just, status, status quo, things have been getting crazy right now. So like I really, eventually I have to find a new home for the show. But uh, that's too big of a task for me to handle right now. i um, too busy just trying to figure out how to make the, this is a business for me, so I'm trying to make that viable, which is working. It just takes organization and time, and I still have to kind of get the show rolling. So that's sort of where I'm at now. Um, I suggest anybody do it. If you feel like it's like a weird thing, don't. If you're going to mooch off your parents, then yeah, that's bad. But if you got something you got to do and you're feeling like you can't do it with your current commitments, then strip out your commitments. It does it's not a big deal. The only people who are going to judge you are people who like care about stupid crap. So um, you know, you do what you got to do for the future. You know, everybody's so tied up in the now. We don't have enough long-term thinkers. Like, think about your life in the long term. Like, I'm trying. I'm. My goal is to have a month in Hawaii every year because I have a, a house there that I'm going to do Hawaii edition on the show. I can't afford that now. It's a dream. And that's part something I want to do that's fun for the show. I'm working towards that. So I'm doing what I have to do now so that we can have lots of fun down the road without any sort of restrictions. Um, so that's that's that. Um, where are we at here? Uh, do, 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 do. I've seen the weekday sauce. Hold on. Uh, I've seen weekday sauce. Where's Sunday sauce? It's coming. It's just not that time. It's summer. Like I'm not going to... You, can't, you don't you don't cook things on the stove in the summer for like uh, hours all day. You know that's a fall, you know Sunday football kind of thing. So we'll get to it. Listen to any music during cooking keep you in the mood when the process gets long. Yeah, I have. Uh, um, look me up on Spotify, Steve Casado. Um, I have playlists and all kind of fun stuff. Good good music. Do you think you'll be doing any Spanish recipes soon? Yeah. I like Spanish recipes. Terry, hey Terry, how you doing? Much love. Have you found the most amazing? Uh, what have you found the most amazing since your channel has taken off? And what do you plan to keep? To, what do you plan to do to keep up the momentum? Well, I've got a spaghetti dish coming up on Thursday, and those seem to do really well. If uh, if you guys haven't noticed that, that's sort of where most of the growth has come from. Um, it's been great. Like uh, I think the, the biggest thing it's done for me personally is it's taken something that has been like risky and and, and it, I've grown fast. But like from where I was coming from, like I I was trying to go guns blazing, so I I was sort of growing slow. So you guys have sort of helped create a viability to, to my life, and uh, that's been the biggest change since all of this momentum. And uh, that is huge. You know what I mean? Like you're you're basically saving a life. Um, so you should all be very, um, you should all know how grateful I am. So again, I'll keep saying it till the day I die. Um, well, I was wondering if Steve had any recipes for super hot, hot sauce. No, but like, I, I know what you're saying. Like maybe we'll do that down the road. And, um, I don't, I mean, I just don't eat super, super hot. So it's like, I don't know why I'm doing that much. Um, Brian, Brian Sellers, Brian, uh, how was your experience at 368? So much fun. So I was like, I, I had to speak at 368 this last week and 
And there was a speech on identity. So I had 10 minutes to speak and I wrote this whole thing. It was going to take like 45 minutes to say. And I was panicking and I called Brian, who gives motivational speeches. And he's amazing and you should go check him out. Um, and I was like, I don't know how to do this. Like, how am I even going to figure this out? Talk me through it. He was like, dude, you're visual. Just start a PowerPoint. Do photos, blah, 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 blah. So I did that. He saved it. Um, I still didn't deliver it like I wanted to, but he helped make it what it was. And uh, so I much love to him. It was a great experience. I mean, six months ago, I was going there super nervous, not knowing anybody, um, thinking nobody cared about me. And then now I was asked to speak at this thing and have people listen to me. It was sort of surreal. Uh, but it was amazing and uh, very fortunate to uh, have some friends over there. Uh, it's always fun kind of going there and mingling with other creators. Um, I'm really interested in figuring out and working with them to do a food thing so I can sort of bring creators from around the country that I know and I've made friends with and maybe we could do something fun. So uh, I want to do that. I'm just scared of planning something like that. It's just like, I get that freaks me out. I really want to do it, but I don't know how to plan it. So we'll see. Um, Chewy, do you like potatoes? Yes, I love potatoes, they're my favorite. Um, what do you think of Indian cuisine? I like it, uh, I don't know much about it. Uh, I, I wish there was more texture. I don't I don't love how it's all sauces, right? Um, like obviously like the chicken with sauces are good, but um, I wish there's more texture. There's this one thing like, uh, it's called aligobi. It's like fried cauliflower in like this, tangy tomato sauce it's delicious that's one of my favorite things it's cauliflower that like eats like chicken um where are you from new york westchester just above um the city uh have you ever done pomodoro sauce that was spicy not from the pepper but the basil um no i don't understand that one sterling gonzalez I'm in culinary school now. Any tips other than gaining experience you can give myself or other students? Um, you like uh, if I personally think that every a lot of chefs they're always in competition with one of one another. They're like uh, it's a, a comp it's like a race to the top who can be the best chef. I would uh, try and just like build a different dynamic in that world, like be less competitive be more um, supportive. And uh, if you want to excel in a kitchen, I would care more. Just show more care, um, show up early, leave late, like be the one who cares more than the other. Um, I'm trying to do that myself a little bit as like a YouTuber. Um, like I'm trying to care a little bit more. So, I would give that advice to literally anybody who is trying to figure that something out like that uh, about whatever you're doing, just care a little bit more. Um, Terry, do you like it when people make and post your recipes? I love it. You make my recipes, make sure you go on Instagram, make a story and tag me in it. The food freak to the food freak with two K's. Um, that's my favorite. Do you know why? My favorite because it's showing me that you guys don't like there's n these recipes aren't intimidating. It's showing I'm able to track progression of these people who I make uh, build relationships with and see their skills get better. So for me, as like uh, just sort of um, to make sure I'm doing a good job, uh, I like to see that. And what I think it does is encourages people who are seeing that to make more recipes and they're like oh look at all these people cooking like why aren't i cooking it's like a social like a collective social guilt that we're imparting on others who uh haven't started cooking yet so i love that um rob morais what advice could you offer to aspiring food vloggers to get started? I have an idea, but would appreciate your advice. Um, well, it's like, what do you, what, okay. Why, why are you doing what you're doing? Ask yourself that question. If you have a good answer with it, then like, um, then you're in a good track. If you 
if you're doing something like food blogging, you're doing something like this, and you don't really have this thing, this reason why that is out, that is that doesn't include views, wealth, you know, notoriety or anything like that. You have a genuine reason for doing what you're doing. Then I, I think you have a really good shot of being successful on it. I think you can be successful if you have those superficial motivations. Of course, it exists. People are famous because of doing ridiculous stuff. But like, um, you need to have a why, and I would think bring the value. Like whatever you're doing, figure out how how it's highlighting a thing you are uniquely better at than most people and then share that value with those people so that they can get as good as you. Uh, that's to me sort of what I, I try to do and seems like if you're genuine about it, it uh, resonates with people. So that's my advice. I'm moving into my first apartment. Amy Han, I'm moving into my first apartment after college this year. What are must-have kitchen tools, favorite cutting boards, etc. for a new cook? Um, I would... It depends on a budget. Obviously, budgets play a f huge factor because I'm about to tell you my favorite cutting board is a boost board, and they can range from fifty dollars to two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, a good cutting board that has some thickness to it is important. Has some a good size to it, not like one of those small ones where everything is rolling off of it. A good knife. I have an Amazon store. If you guys don't know, it's in the description of every video, and in that store, I have things I'm grilling, a section for cooking equipment. And in the cooking equipment, I'll have a variety of knives that I use, like a set of knives that you don't see in the show that are personal that I have that are expensive. You'll see the set of knives that are the Victorinox chef's knives that I have. They'll be there. My cutting boards will be there. And then I have different price points for all of those things. And I have a lot of stuff there. Um, so if you really want to shop I get a little percentage of the, the money from there. You don't have to buy this stuff that I have in there. Um, these are suggestions, right? Um, some of them aren't probably the greatest things. Uh, I just wanted to have this idea of like what you should have there um, as it's some of the things that I use. Like I don't go out and buy the best uh, spatula all the time. You know what I mean? So I'm still able to cook well. So you, you don't need to buy the best stuff necessarily, but you will find like tongs, cheap tongs are cheap and they don't really work well. So like maybe spend a little bit of money on tongs and a cutting board, you know, a good knife, all that kind of stuff. And a good knife shouldn't cost you $150. A good knife should cost you around 30 bucks. So all that stuff should be down in the description of all of my videos if you ever want to check it out. Um, okay. Where's the best burger in New York City? Manetta Tavern, Black or Label Burger? Or ever had the Manetta Tavern Black Label Burger? I've never had it, although I want to try it. Um, the best burger, I don't know. Shake Shack maybe, but no. Like It's good, but it's... I don't know. I don't have a good answer. I cook a lot. I don't eat out in the city that often anymore. Um, fresh corn or flour tortillas? Ooh. If it's fresh, I, I prefer to make flour at home, but like I think fresh, if I'm going out to a taqueria and they're making it, I think I'll get fresh corn for sure. Um, 9.40, I will do this for a little bit longer. I'm like blacking, I feel like dizzy from answering questions. Um, let's see. Guilty pleasure, Oreos or Doritos? Dude, Oreos, 100%. Anyone who picks Doritos over Oreos is out of their mind. Um, what's your favorite Greek food? Gyro. Gyro. I, I say gyro, but I don't want anyone to think that I don't know how it's properly said. Like, I also know uh, mozzarella is not pronounced mozzarella. But, like, I'm not in Italy right now, so I'm, I don't need to uh, mozzarella. You know, like I don't, I don't have to go there. I'm not Giada. Um, what would your last meal be on Earth? Probably rigatoni and meatballs, or like a whole brisket to myself. Um, do you ever watch Chef Tom? I don't know who Chef Tom is, Andrew Jimmo. Uh, Jimmy Chow. 
Uh, do you have any more pop-up event videos future for 368? No, but like um, we're, we're talking about some ideas and potential stuff. So nothing on the books as of yet, which I'm sort of happy about because I'm sort of crazy right now and I don't really need to do a, a huge like 100 person event right now. So that's good. You ever watch Sam the Cooking Guy? Um, I'll be honest, I found your videos by clicking your fully capitalized name, thinking it was his, the best mistake ever. Yeah, I changed the, all the full capitalized, um, yeah, I do watch Sam, um, yeah, he's a good guy. Um, he makes a lot of videos, so I, I respect the hustle. Um, I haven't talked to him though, so I'm sure eventually we'll touch base uh black rampage do you have a creme brulee recipe no oh, th and thank you for the super chat i just saw that and if any if I, I saw some super chats and i didn't recognize i didn't acknowledge you thank you so much i really appreciate it i'm sort of focused on the questions i'm not really looking at what's going on in the chat so um toughest part about youtube best part about youtube toughest part is um the focus it takes to edit um, sometimes I just like, I cannot start, right? It's going to be a long editing process and I'll wake up early. I'll wake up at like six o'clock and be like, I'm going to get a jump on editing. And then I'll just like, I'll get my coffee and like my sort of newspaper in the morning is the front page of YouTube. And, um, and I basically, it's a bad habit, but I start my day with like a YouTube, uh, but I feel like it just sort of is like there's so much potential inspiration to get right in the morning. So I like to sort of uh, consume. But, um, I, you know, I always get it done if it's maybe a little an hour too late. It's an hour too late. But uh, it, it takes a lot. So I've, as I've gotten along, I've stopped putting so much pressure on myself to really like, you know, hit the same mark every time in terms of like the release date. So I have like a, if I'm ahead of the game, it's going to be released at 6 p.m. If I'm running late probably 8 p.m. And if I'm really slammed, it's going to be released at 10 p.m. Um, and that's sort of how I gauge when a video is going to be released. Um, oh, God. Have you ever made tacos al pastor? No, but I actually am talking to... Uh, this guy named Grill Works by Ben on Instagram. He builds awesome wood fire, like uh, big kit Santa Maria style kind of. Uh, I don't even, I don't even want to call them grills. They're just like it's not like a form factor of a grill that you see. They're like something you'd see in a restaurant. And I asked him about it. Like I was barbecuing with him this weekend, and um, he's like, "Dude, I'm making one." And so I really want to get or figure out how to make a. a I think they're called a trompo, um, like the vertical spits, but with real charcoal, not like propane, right? So like they cook with real charcoal. If you watch the Tacos uh, Chronicles on Netflix, you'll see it. That's what I was thinking about it, all that stuff. So yeah, and Tacos Al Pastor is my all-time favorite. If you ever go into New York City and you want the best tacos, probably in like the country, I think. Like, I, I, I don't know how you can make them better. It's Los Tacos number one at Chelsea Market. They have uh, an Adobado El Pastor type taco on the spit. It's the best. Go there, run there. It's like the East Coast in and out for me, I get least. So, um, what tips would you have to give a 16 year old baker chef? Um, just be just be a sponge. Like, don't put pressure on yourself. Just experience. Like you're ability to be a great baker or chef will be determined by your life experiences so have a have a life live a life do things go places try stuff meet people like have all of that let that inspire you go to learn the technicalities of whatever you're going to do but be an inspired person like somebody who can find inspiration easily these things help you like uh, i to, to be honest like when I worked in advertising, there was a bit there. People said there were in, in, in the advertising world, you are a business person or you're a creative and you often don't have the, you know, sort of, you're not, you're not both of them. Um, and that screwed me up a lot when I was working there. 
And I broke out of that and found out, look, I'm a creative person. Who knew? No one in my in my life knew. Um, so it's and and and, and when I when I think about creativity, I think about it's just like a bigger pool of knowledge, right? Like I can be creative because I've watched every food video thing that's ever been made so that I could take the thing that I like about this one and the thing I like about this one and this one and this one and ooh, I like these elements of a YouTube vlog and all of this kind of stuff. And then I take that and spiral it into this lens that I have in my head that only I have and out comes this video. And it's the same with a chef or a baker or whatever it is. So that's what I would say. Um, are you... Actually, 30 minute meal ideas? Yes, eventually it's superhero. Yes, I like the name too. Jonathan Saipat, are you interested in sous vide cooking? Yes, I do it for the holidays. Like turkey, like we don't cook whole turkeys in my house. Like it's stupid. Um, I did a video on it because like I know people want to, it's a centerpiece, but we've, we're over it after years of doing it. We take the breasts off, we take the legs off, we'll like sous vide or confit the legs overnight. Um, and then just roast the roast the breasts, uh, wrap them in its own fat, and that's it. So I'll do more of it on a day to day cooking. I don't really cook with it like on a nightly basis though. Daddy Dutch, Kent, my man, Kent beat me in the battle of the kitchens. He is the victor. I told him when he won. I told him when he beat me. I was like, if you don't win this whole thing, I'm never going to talk to you again. So shout out to, to Kent at Daddy Dutch Barbecue for uh, having real chops in the kitchen, being a badass. Um, when is the last time you made shrimp carbonara, uh, shrimp pasta carbonara? Uh, not since I burnt the hell out of my hand, uh, and I probably won't make it anytime soon. Uh, all right, nine forty-eight. About ten more minutes of this, I think I can handle it. That. Uh, Emma, Emma Bolenbach, my cousin. What's up, Emma? Um, anyway, you're getting Dave on your channel. Yeah, eventually we'll get there. You know him, though. He's a loose cannon, and uh, who knows? Uh, and he see, we'll see a cloud with your brother. Two questions after. I just answered that. Um, Jonathan Sidepot, are you better at production or cooking? Uh, probably cooking. Like, I'm, I know what you mean. I'm good at production, but I need to tell you, like, I'm not good. I'm not a good editor, right? Like, I edit like a, an editor from the, a movie editor from the 1950s. Like, I'm not doing anything fancy. You don't see any graphics. Nothing is swooping in or doing anything crazy. Like, I'm literally just taking footage, chopping it, retiming it, different speeds, reversing it. I'm just doing all of the basic things that I can. Um, very basic stuff. It's like, I'm, it's... A lot of what I'm doing is I'm thinking about it when I'm holding the camera and shooting it. So like uh, the things you see that are cool maybe have been premeditated and are camera movements that I've figured out. Um, but cooking is my thing. Like I, it's what I feel like if I don't know something in production, like I'm lost. I have to go ask somebody else. If I don't know something in cooking, I can sort of feel it out or, you know, it's just I'm, I'm more confident in that for sure. Um, Alex Orozco. Orozco. Can you make a chipotle cream sauce with tacos? It's referred to as orange sauce in the Bay Area. Yeah, I'll do a taco with that in it eventually, but um, you know, I'm not crazy about that. Uh, I usually like a salsa verde or something like that. But yeah. Um, H A asks, what would you cook to impress a date? Uh, generally, if I was going to impress a date, I'd cook the thing that they think they, they like the least and then make them like it. Um, but something simple, always do something simple and light, nothing heavy. Um, so like a fish, fish would be good or pasta, like, a, um, a very simple pasta, like blow them away with how simple something can be and how good it can be. Um, what advice could you offer aspiring food bloggers to get started? All right. I think you already, I think I already answered that. Yeah. Favorite cookbook. Uh, God, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to skip that. Um, 
Lily Hale, are you single? Yes. Told you the story. Don't ask questions like that. Come on. Uh, can you do can you do more videos on knife skills like deboning, chicken, filleting, fish? Yeah. Um, I admittedly am not like a pro at that stuff, but um, I do know my way around it. And um, yeah, we'll do more of that stuff. Uh, Raphael Bagnoli, sear oven or reverse sear? Uh, it depends on the cut and how much time I have. Uh, if I have the time, reverse sear, usually. How important is making mistakes, Brian Sellers? Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much my life is a big uh, amalgam of mistakes up until this point. So I would have to say, uh, yeah, it's pretty important. Mistakes are everything. Um, and it sucks because mistakes are painful in the moment. And, um, you know, you it's hard to admit them, but when you look back, you have to, you can't, you can't help but realize like, those mistakes are sort of what make you who you are. Um, and it's those burns, right? The, the stings, the scars. You remember that, you remember that stuff. So it, uh, it stays with you and it, is, uh, it makes you who you are. So I think it's important. Um, Zesty, what is your favorite knife? It's got to be the one I use on the show, the 8-inch Victorinox Chef's Knife. It's $30. It has been with me uh, when we started the show. We got the when we started the food truck. We did those knives. When I started the show, I wanted to use a knife that was very humble. That anybody, no one would be like, "Hey, you know, using that crazy knife, I can't do what you do." No, I'm using the literally the most approachable knife you can while still like paying attention to like a, a, a well-made knife, you know. Um, answer this one before you go. Gabrielle uh, Ibera, have you ever thought about writing a cookbook? Yes, um, I've always thought about it. I didn't think it was viable up until very recent, uh, up until very recently. It's a big ordeal, right? Um, I talked to somebody who was like, you can't, the, he just wrote a book and he's like, they will only allow 7% of the content you already have to be in the book. So unless I can get a deal that could be like, the story of how the show came to be and then like in depth of the recipes and all that kind of stuff uh, of what I've already done. I don't know if I'm going to do it anytime soon because I don't know without, without a lot of help or um, uh, I, the show taking a hit, focusing on a book. Like, I just don't know if that's in the cards right now. I, I enjoy doing the videos. They're more important to me right now. Um, and I'm starting to do sponsored videos now. I'm starting to get people to come on to the show. Um, and so like, I really want to focus on building that out and, um, and yeah, so eventually we'll figure something out. I did have an idea for like a coffee table picture forward cookbook. That was like a cookbook second because I don't think people even use cookbooks. Um, and like, I like the idea of like something that's meant to be out all the time, not like in your shelf, um, like something that sits on your coffee table. Um, maybe I'll do something like that. I don't know. Um, will you ever collaborate with Babish? Uh, I'm, we're in New York. I, I've emailed him. He didn't respond, so that's on him. I'm not reaching out again until I hear from him. So uh, it's on. It's on Babby, as they will say. Um, is Patreon? Wait. Is Patreon worth the effort for me or for you? Uh, for me, I don't, I'm not like, I, I actually might put the speech I just gave up on Patreon so my Patreon uh, people can watch. But for me, if you're giving me money on Patreon, it's because you want to make sure I'm, I, I can live so I can do more of the show. It's not so that you can get special. Like, I, I clearly am doing a lot of work. So it's like, I, I think it's most people understand, like, I'm not, I can't make exclusive content um there you know i mean i have my social media i gotta keep i'm only one man and i'm doing everything so um that is like that is so like i can be happy you know what i mean like i can invest in the show that my business is is prospering like um I, I don't suggest anybody be a patreon a patron if you're tight on money or 
struggling paying bills. Like that's not what I'm asking for for those. Those are people who just feel like they want to they want to help. And um, and so that's that. I mean, I, I appreciate anyone who helps. If if you're asking if it's worth it for you, it's that's a question for yourself. Um, any meal ideas for home date night dinner, Mitchell or Rook? Um, yeah, like, uh, maybe the tuna tartare, do the tuna tartare. Uh, we just did that on the show. That's a, that's a nice romantic date night meal. Um, where are we? Where are we? Are you planning on making smoked brisket, Kareem? Yes, I'm actually shooting it this weekend. It's another sponsored thing, and um, I have to really, like, it's two days of shooting. I wanna, I'm going to show a method of doing it overnight, and uh, I'm going to do it more or less in the Aaron Franklin method, just not on an offset smoker. So I'm really excited about that. Um, Cowboy Blog asks, what are some good cleaning tips for wood chopping box? Um, I just... You could use salt or lemon on the show. I just use hot water quickly, like not drenching the board and some light soap, just so the board stays nice. Like I've already uh, resigned to the idea that I'm gonna go through cutting boards like crazy because of how I treat it. And I don't expect you guys to like slam your knives into your cutting boards. Maybe do it once, get a photo of it, a video or something, but like don't do it like I do. It's literally will chip the board apart. It's not good. Um, so yeah, um, that's just how I do it. Nothing crazy. Uh, Joker, super chat. Joker Productions, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Mac or PC? P uh, Mac, for better or for worse. I don't know, you know. Uh, where do you pick up your camera skills? Tom W. Uh, I, I picked up a camera and I figured out the skills. I used the taste, my own taste, right? Like my creative taste like when i go to a, a store and i'm like oh i like that rug versus the ugly rug like i just rely on whatever that is tell me what's a good photo and then i can look at it and be like oh that was a gross photo and like as you get better your photo every photo you used to do got worse like the photos i took in the beginning of the show i hate now so it's it just you know it just happens like that what are some future recipes that we can expect coming up on your channel <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a really good, I don't have a good layout yet. The fall is coming and the fall I really structure uh, intensely because of the holidays and stuff like that. Um, just get ready for the holidays. I know a lot of you guys are new here. If you want to see what the holidays are like, go back to my December videos. You'll see how I do holiday videos. And my birthday is December 27th. December is my month. I love Christmas. I go crazy. And uh, I do the same for Thanksgiving and the whole month. So November, December, all holiday. Um, Isaac Goldman. What's up, Isaac? Isaac is a talented graphic designer. Um, any thoughts on cooking with cannabis? Uh, we'll see what the laws, what happens with the laws. Like, uh, you know, where I'm in New York, where we live in the Stone Age over here. So... Um, so we'll see. I don't know if I can even legally do that right now. So we'll see. I know everyone else is doing it. Uh, Taste made does it. All these people are doing it. So it's trendy. Uh, so we'll see. Isaac Fung, would you make a meal prep series for college students? Yes, but I don't know what kind of uh, where could you, where do you cook? Where do college students cook? Um, like in a dorm or do they have kitchens? That's a question I need answered. Um, can we get a decent chicken breast recipe? Fred. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can do that. I never make like a, just a chicken breast usually. I'll do something to it. I, I don't like a thick chicken. So I'll make a thin cuts and marinate it or do something like that. Jeff Caston, my buddy Jeff. What's up, man? How you doing? When are you gonna do a pop up event in the in the city? I'm gonna try and do something at three six eight. I don't know if I can even cook there, but I was gonna do grilled cheese. I want to rent the front half 
and just with panini presses, bang out grilled cheeses, so easy, wouldn't really take much. Hopefully we can do something like that. Um, Andrew Tom, did you ever try John Travolta pasta in Florence? No, what is that? I've never even heard of that. Mm. Chandler Star, you talk a lot about good olive oil. What should I look for in a good olive oil? Other than the price tag, what makes a good olive oil versus poor olive oil? Well, go to the store and buy yourself the $2 cheapo, cheapest olive oil you can. Then, for the sake of comparison, buy yourself a decent one, like one that is from Italy, right? Imported from Italy. Um, it's really hard to tell. You have to, I don't know where you live or what your, is available for you, but you have to try them, right? You get them, get a little piece of bread, a little salt, and taste them, which one you like better. You don't want to cook. You don't want to cook with super flavorful olive oil. You want to make olive um, dressings and stuff like that with them. Um, but you, it's good to have uh, a good high smoke point oil, like a, a grapeseed oil or a canola oil, or vegetable oil, a good olive oil, which is just like, you know, you're making sure it's coming from a decent place. It's not like, you know, packaged in, you know, wherever. I don't know. I mean, like, it's really weird. It's, it's hard. You have to, a lot of what shopping is, is marketing, right? It's a bottle. How nice does that bottle look? Uh, I don't always think because a bottle is nice, it's good, but I, in a lot of instances, it's a good indication. Um, so yeah, I just try, try it out, figure you gotta, you gotta find your, your own way, you know? What is your ethnic background? I'm 75% Italian and a little bit German. Uh, have you ever thought about opening your own place? Or I'm more focused on YouTube. Um, I've been there, done that with the food truck, and I don't think that was the way for me. A um, few more. Wow, I would have. I'm going to answer 100 questions. I got to get to 100. Uh, have you ever thought? Okay, I did that. I'm just delirious right now. Who's your favorite CJ? Who's your favorite bald YouTuber named CJ? Huh? Oh, obviously, obviously it's CJ. Come on, get out of here. Go like moderator CJ. See the CJ with the blue ring. Please go subscribe to his channel. Show him some love. You know, do all that. He does a live stream every Thursday. It's called the Hot Seat. I've been on it. I'm gonna be on it again. So make sure you go show him some love. Okay. 97. Cut off the questions. No more questions. Um, always hear you talk about food truck. What's the story behind that? Any horror stories? Yes, I feel like that's like, um, should we, CJ and Monica, we got to do a whole food truck Q&A uh, story. I guess the story of it. I don't know. That's like, it's a whole thing. Like, it's too much to get into right now. Um, what software do you use to edit Final Cut Pro? Number 99. Oh my God, Brian. Brian Baker must not know me. He asks, what's your favorite NFL team? Can you guys just tell him in the chat? Because like, I thought it was so obvious. It's painful for me to have to explain that. Um, what's your take on French cuisine? A Antoine Bordeaux. Oh, I like it. It's rich. It's amazing. Um, it takes a lot of time. Um, but like the, that French sauce, reduction sauces, butter, all that kind of stuff, potatoes, it's delicious. I've never been to Paris, but from what I can tell, the restaurants I've been to in New York, it's been great. Uh, okay. That was an hour. 100 questions in an hour. <sighs> wow. Well, that was fun. I'm beat. I got spaghetti alle vongole to edit tomorrow and into Thursday, and then I'm making my brisket, and then we'll get. We're just gonna get into a roll, guys. We're just getting started. I feel. I literally feel like if this is a game, like I'm. I just started stretching, right? You know. So. We got crazy stuff in the future. I'm so happy all of you are here. 
Um, I love you all. I hope this was helpful. <laughs> Elena, why are you asking questions? I, I'm, I'm not gonna ask, I'm not gonna answer Elena's question because I can't end on 101. This isn't the movie. This isn't a Dalmatians movie. I like it nice and I like it to end on 100. I can barely get a word out anymore. Um, so yeah, honestly, thank you guys so much. I got so much love for all of you. Uh, I appreciate all of you being here. Keep cooking. Keep sending me those photos of you cooking on Instagram, the food freak, 2Ks. Uh, all that stuff's going to be in the description of all my videos. And um, maybe we'll do this more often. I had to kind of, you know, pop my cherry doing this. Just sitting here talking to myself, essentially. Feels weird sort of delirious, but um, thank you. Appreciate all you being here, all you guys who stayed up late, anyone from Europe, thank you. Love you. I'll see you guys on Thursday with Spaghetti Ale Bongole.